According to Jim Rickards, all currencies are going to collapse in the worst depression in recorded history, and I agree with his assertion. Global debt increased from 1971 to today by the rate by which every human on the planet will be $1 million in debt in few decades if something doesn't snap. But of course, the snap event is already here. Sheeple have no idea what is coming. This debt cannot be repaid ever, there has to be either catastrophic inflation or a general default, including major countries. What is going to happen when the music stops? How is that all the good countries have low government debt and seem to manage without the huge structural deficits that plague the big west? A rising federal debt as a percentage of GDP has historically been associated with declines. Studies have shown long-term economic downturns are more closely tied to excessive private debt levels. There is far more private debt than public, and private sources cannot for the most part just print more money when needed. During the housing boom in the mid-2000s, increases in private debt, topping at a yearly rate of $4 trillion to $5 trillion, were carrying the debt increases, and we then got only 15 cents of GDP per added $1 of debt. After the crash we did not have enough private debt suckers so the government started doubling their debt every eight years. The result was 30 cents of GDP per $1 added debt, double the efficiency. What I notice in Q4 2020 data though is household debt is beginning to ramp up in earnest again. The rubes who say that debt doesn't matter are in for a rude awakening indeed. Serfdom awaits all save for the 1% since they'll insulate themselves from currency collapse. Preventing their own demise by hordes of roving starving fiat bugs will be their only concern. Debt doesn't matter for politicians. The most popular politicians have run up the most debt. They buy favors from the people with the public's own money. Politicians retire rich so that the financial crises don't affect them in the future. Central banks need inflation to be in the 10% plus range. Anything below that would require debt defaults instead of inflation to wipe away the debt. And that is unacceptable. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. Have you ever wondered why countries can't just print more money to off their debts, or to feed the homeless or fix unemployment, or any other issue for that matter? The short answer can be summed up in just one word. Inflation. Inflation is defined as a persistent, substantial rise in the general level of prices related to an increase in the volume of money and resulting in the loss of value of the currency. Technically we could potentially resolve our debt problem in that way, but it would lead to much bigger problems. Primarily, it would result in hyperinflation. With trillion new US dollars in international hands and over a trillion of that in China alone. A dramatic increase in national income everywhere except the US. That income spike would cause aggregate demand for goods purchasable in US dollar to soar. Merchants would naturally respond by increasing the price of their goods, restabilizing the real value of the dollar. The consequences of such a series of events would be catastrophic. The purchasing power of the dollar would decrease enormously. This would place strain on American buyers who now have to pay more for goods without the higher income that China has received and thus cause a recession that would dwarf that of 2008. Unemployment would spike, as many firms would find it advantageous to migrate to China and elsewhere where there is new demand for their products. Meanwhile, the People's Bank of China, for one, would be pissed, because even though they now have more dollars than they did before, those dollars aren't worth nearly as much as when they sold that debt to the US. Whereas before $1.3 trillion could have bought China, say, 200 aircraft carriers, after inflation of this magnitude, it might only buy them 20. And we know that China's in this for the aircraft carriers. They would begrudgingly buy those 20 carriers and haul them across the Pacific to vent their frustrations against our now decrepit treasury in person. Meanwhile, we'd be firing bows and arrows from canoes like those island people that went to war with the US in that British movie. Doomsday scenarios aside, we would end up with two major problems, among others, for sure, a devastating recession and a diplomatic fallout with China, and other servicers of US debt. Basically, the dollar is only valuable if it's scarce, because we use it to procure scarce resources. When it's no longer scarce, it's no longer transitive as a currency and has no value. 
So, in reality, the reason that other countries would no longer lend us money if we freely printed our own is because the exchange rate between the dollar and any other currency would approach zero, leaving banks and merchants with nothing to gain by transacting in US dollars. There would be no incentive for nations to produce anything of real value, rendering the concept of GDP meaningless. Furthermore, if we could resolve debt by just printing bills, there would be nothing to prevent other countries, central banks from doing so and you would end up in a world full of meaningless currency. Money is nothing but a record or a sticker of total goods and services produced in an economy. Therefore money can be printed only at the same rate as an economy, GDP, is growing. So if US GDP grows at 3%, US can print 3% extra dollars. However if money supply exceeds GDP growth, there is double entry of goods and services produced so a particular good, service is counted twice but can only be delivered once. It's quite obvious that the two potential suitors for the good produced once but counted twice will be engaged in a furious bidding war which will drive the price of the good produced once but counted twice. Ultimately you will have a balanced equation where on one side there will be extra currency printed, above the normal rate of GDP growth, and on other side you will have extra price you have to pay for that good. So if you don't print money if your GDP is growing, you face a depression, but if you print money in excess of your GDP growth, you face higher inflation which leads to demand shortfall causing job losses. This condition is called stagflation which is worse than depression. In depression, jobs are hard to come by but prices remain low. In stagflation, you have few jobs but prices remain high as all the excess printed currency is still in circulation. The US has some leeway as US dollar is global reserve currency. So the US can print dollars slightly in excess of its annual GDP growth, but this will reduce US debt by few tens of billions every year when theoretically the US needs one hundreds of billions every year to reduce its debt. The best way forward is to refinance the debt and push for higher growth every year and pay back over a period of several decades but such a scenario is susceptible to black swan events like wars, recessions etc. Now, if a country gets into financial trouble, it may have to default on its debt, which basically means you won't get your money back. But the US is generally considered an extremely risk-free investment because the US dollar is the most widely used and most trustworthy currency in the world. It's even written into the Constitution that the United States cannot default on its debt. I'll leave you with this final thought and what I think is possibly the best way to sum up why governments can't just print off unlimited amounts of money. If money grew on trees, it would be as valuable as leaves. Truth is that where there is debt, someone is owed. That is where the money is. So ask yourselves, who holds the notes? All this debt is simply relocating every last cent into the hands of a very few. The virus hoax is simply one more, look squirrel, to turn people against one another. God forbid the common slobs ever wised up and realized they're all being played for fools. And unfortunately, the masses are falling for it hook, line and sinker. The country that is destroying the US dollar is the United States itself. The mismanagement and outright corruption and market manipulation has gone off the reservation. The US is essentially holding the world hostage by pointing a gun at its own head. It's bizarre to witness what is going on. The rest of the world is focusing on their own problems and right now, a big part of it is how to avoid getting sucked down the drain when the US dollar implodes. The main problem with rising debt is government spending more than they get from taxes. That deficit spending encourages wasteful, excessive spending since no one will complain about tax hikes to pay for the extra spending. This spending is intended to increase nothing, with the exception of government overreach perhaps. They are treading water before some event. My money is on world war, but a major monetary event is also possible. The debt will never be repaid bonds will mature and be replaced with new bonds if investors are willing. What really counts is the annual interest expense, and that is now at historical lows. Interest rates less than the inflation rate. So, if government spent money wisely, of course they don't, it is wise to sell 10-year treasury bonds at 0.7% interest or 30-year treasury bonds at low interest rates, if the money was spent wisely. I'd bet interest on the US debt is down this year in spite of the rapidly rising level of debt. And that may be the best economic news in this horrible recession year. The major monetary even the world war will destroy nations and the outcome cannot be guaranteed. Without the guarantee then it is risky for them. 
A global digital ID is a guarantee not a guarantee is a major global conflict the question is will opponents pull the chemical, biological or nuclear trigger. Fed stopped being able to pull value from the future in 2008 ninths and the economy stalled because of it. The only thing that changed since then is the Fed being allowed to use QE to keep it all going. If people were wise it should tell you. The future is gone and the QE is to keep it going in the here and now. There is no economic policy being implemented to make it any different neither. Something has gone wrong, yes. Debt has passed 100% of GDP and is therefore now snowballing. Duh. Banana Republic go burr. Fed can't print money only bondage. Nature creates money i.e. gold. This was the Atlantis report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.